Good Wednesday morning, friends, or afternoon, or evening, or middle of the night, or whenever you may happen to join for those that I don't know. I'm Reverend Jennifer Finley, our Momentum and Discipleship Pastor here at First United Methodist Church, and this is our midweek time to simply pause, to take a deep breath, to wonder together how and where God is meeting us. Um, and in this particular season, we're asking that question about our Lenten journey. How and where is God meeting us in this journey between Ash Wednesday and Easter? And uh, today I thought I'd share with you a place that God met me, maybe unexpectedly, uh, something I certainly did not plan, and God met me here. For those that may not recognize the space behind me, uh, this is our archives room at church, a place where old books live and old pictures live. Um, but also lots of memories of faithful folks in this faith community over the decades. Um, and uh, if you've been with us for a while over these past four years, as we have shared these daily times together, uh, you will know that I found this place, uh, a beautiful place of refuge during the pandemic, a place to come and to, to find and to wonder about how generations before us had navigated other challenging hard times. Um, I, I'm, you know, I'm a self-confessed nerd, um, but there is something for me about a space like this that reminds me of the ways in which folks have been faithful in the past, the way God has brought generations through good times and challenging times. And, and I will say God meets me in those memories and those reminders. Um, so last weekend, I was actually just up here intending to pick up a box of books to move it someplace else. And um, I don't know about you, but I know many of us probably have that experience of, I'll just move this one thing. And then I'll just move this one thing, whether it's our homes or our offices or other spaces. And then suddenly a few hours later, you realize you have moved all the things and organized all the shelves. Um, so I spent some time up here organizing some things. And if, if this is ever a space you want to come visit, you are more than welcome. We've got a beautiful table in the middle of the room now, a place to sit down, to pull things off to sh the shelves, to look at pictures, to look at books. But it wasn't just that God met me this week in this physical space. I wanted to share a couple of places in which God met me. So uh, I ran across a series of pictures. I think I had seen them before, but it had been a while. Um, and they're not going to come across real easily on the screen. But if you can see this, this is a picture and there's several others like it of many people gathered for the ceremonial groundbreaking that happened prior to the building of our current sanctuary. And I don't know if you can see on these pictures, but there's incredible joyful smiles on most of the faces. Now there's a, there's a few of the folks who were I probably there as dignitaries that are a little bit more somber, but I love this because there are kids putting their feet on shovels and they're simply, you can see the joy on the faces, the joy and the expectation. And because I know a bit about our history, um, these really struck me because there was a moment of joy, excitement as something new was happening, as they were finally getting going on this new vision, this new building, this new era in the life of this faith community. And of course, on that particular day, they had no idea what was up ahead. They had no idea about the challenges and the joys that would come up ahead. They had no idea about both the, the beautiful pieces of building a new building and the challenges of funding, furnishings, and all of that. They also had no idea about how faithful folks would be to furnish that new space. for, And they probably had absolutely no idea that we would still be worshiping in that same space that they were breaking ground for 
here and now. Um, no idea what we would have experienced in the coming decades. I don't have the exact date for those pictures, but it was sometime in the 50s, I believe, um, early 50s. Um, the other thing that they had no idea, uh, when they broke ground for this sanctuary, uh, there was the current existing sanctuary sitting on the property, that they were still worshiping it. And they had no idea, with these smiles on their faces, that as soon as they got this new sanctuary built and had barely moved in, there would be a Sunday morning fire that would destroy the old sanctuary, the place that had held generations of faithful folk. And I don't know why, but that story struck me. The reminder that contained in images like this is that reminder that God hangs with us in those joyful moments and in those beautiful expectations for the future and God hangs with us when suddenly the path changes and the direction moves and you know we, we have to navigate roadblocks. There was something in those images that caught me, that reminded me of God's faithfulness on our journeys, both individually and collectively. I had seen those images before, but I ran across one that I had not seen before that I thought I would share with you. This is a bigger image, and um, it's on display here in the archive room if you ever want to look at it. But I pulled it out and thought, I wonder who this is? Who is this woman? Luckily for me, someone, I'm not quite sure who, although my guess probably is Ruth Town, Dr. Ruth Town, uh, before she passed away, put a note on the back of this. And it says, Laura, Laura Bell McGee, born in Red Cedar, Wisconsin, June 11th, 1889, passed away June 17th, 1975 in Little Falls, Minnesota. Miss McGee transferred her membership to the First Methodist Church, Kirksville, Missouri, October 10th, 1923, when she came to Kirksville to teach in the Northeast Missouri State Teachers College, now Truman State University. While at the university, she had attained her doctor's degree and became head of the home economics department. Among her many accomplishments, she was known for her lovely needlework of all kinds. Miss McGee taught the OTP Sunday school class here, the church, for most of her 46 years here. I love that. She was a member of the official board, served on the building committee for the new church, which was started in 1954. So I imagine she's in these pictures someplace with a shovel in her hand. She also served as the Sunday school superintendent, giving her time and talents to many other committees and at times filling the pulpit as a lay speaker. Probably likely in a time when that was not super usual for women. Paul's stained glass window in the sanctuary was given in her honor by the OTP class. She taught her last Sunday school class June 8, 1969, moving the following week to Minnesota to spend her last days with her relatives. And then I noticed that at the bottom of this, the portrait was made by Isabel K. Dar, who was also a member of that Sunday school class. Again, the, the little image here doesn't do this credit, but I wanted to share that with you because God met me in the description of a woman I have never met, but someone whose faithfulness over many, many years, I have to imagine, touched so many lives um, and is part of our, our story together, a part of God's story of faithfulness through, throughout time. And, um, you know, Many folks may not remember, may not know this name, but now I have a face of someone who made a difference here. And somehow God met me in that reminder. And so if you need a reminder of God's faithfulness, um, you are always welcome. This, this room is often locked, but if you stop by the church office and let us know, I will always happily come join you in exploring up here. But more importantly to me, these are reminders that God's presence does lead and guide us through the generations. And at times we cannot see that and we don't know the impacts we make. Um, but we do know that God is with us each and every step of the way. So as we continue this Learnton journey together, know that we aren't alone and that God is guiding. Go in peace, my friends.